Okay, I want <laughs> bids for what this episode should be about. Um, what, to you, is the most underrated organ? Oh, that's a really difficult one, isn't it? I think appendix. Yeah? You big fan of yours? N- no idea. No idea what it does, <laughs> but it's, it's there and it can kill you at any time. So you it must be good, right? It. <laughs> yeah. Nat, for you, um, what's the most underrated I'm, I'm organ? I'm seeing a liver there and I think livers are quite exciting. They do lots of complicated stuff. If it goes wrong, it can go wrong bad. Yeah. Can anyone, if, bonus points for anyone who can tell me what I've drawn at the bottom there, by the way. Yeah. Mm. Oh, I don't know what that is. <laughs> That is the diaphragm. Oh. Ah. All the bonus points to me. Yeah. I think that's a pretty, it's a, it's a pretty underrated one. You yeah. really need it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, this episode is not about the diaphragm. It's not about the liver. And it is not about the appendix. It is about the tongue. The tongue? Oh. Tongue. Wow. Those, those are some good examples of tongues. <laughs> um, so, tongue... Muscle, move stuff around, blah, blah, blah. We all know what a tongue is. Fish tongues um, function quite differently to to tongues of land vertebrates. Instead of being, you know, sitting low and then moving up and around to chew things, they, they start off sitting high and they pull back down. And the reason for that is they're underwater and they have to um, pull water and food down to create suction to get food through them this is my fish as you can see starting up high with the tongue tongues like ours start down low they move up and around to like mostly what they're doing is positioning food so that you can chew it properly possible um, midpoint is something like what the mud skipper has which is um it's a fish but it consumes a lot of food above water which most fish couldn't do because wow. they in the absence of water they couldn't get that get the food back um or the water through the purpose of the suction is also to get the water through the gills what why is it called a mud skipper i think because they skip along the mud uh, like names mm. it's in the name isn't it it's in the name yeah it's in the name oh so they carry around a mouthful of water to catch their food they get a mouthful of water they kind of push the water forwards, catch the food, and then pull the water back down. That is really um, weird. And so they, it's thought, even when they're on land, they have to carry a mouthful of water around with them yeah. so that they can eat yeah. whatever food they catch. Mm. That's really silly. <laughs> if you squeeze them, would they shoot the water out like a water yeah. pistol? <laughs> Don't squeeze them. <laughs> I saw so many pictures of dead fish when I was researching for this. I got really upset. Oh. <laughs> But it's thought that 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 water is a kind of like proto land tongue, you know, before Mm. like there's a separate muscle mass. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um, So what what's the tongue for? We've been over some some examples here. Um, Speaking, we didn't talk about, but I think that's self evident. Um, Any other ideas? What you might? I I don't know, but. Those four things sound like the great making of a good night out. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, but there's innovation in the world of tongues, right? By the way, this is a patent for Juicero. Oh my god. To represent innovation. <laughs> oh my god. Is that a patent for a tongue? Um, so it was a, it's one of the worst inventions that got some of the most money invested into it. Google invested. Um, it's a it's a proprietary proprietary juice squeezer where you buy this machine and then you order packets of vegetables. You put them in the machine and it squeezes them. But you can actually squeeze those packets um, with your bare hands. You don't even need the machine. It costs like four hundred dollars. It's just incredibly over engineered. I think it was then... actually seven hundred dollars. Oh, okay. The price went up. This article <laughs> I read, and you had to connect it to the Wi-Fi to use it. Yeah, and you could only buy their juice packets. Oh, like like the like the coffee machines where you have to buy the specific tabs, otherwise it just doesn't work. Yeah, that's why they're so cheap. They get you they get you on the refills. It's like printers. Only in this case, the machine is also really expensive. <laughs> 
Anyway, uh, innovation in the tongue world. Anybody know why snakes have forked tongues? They smell with their tongues. But do you know why they can't do that with a with like a you know, it, one piece tongue? Does it why make it directional? Yeah. Oh man, that is wow. same as you've got. That is cool. two eyes. Between us, between us, Nat, we make someone who's quite clever. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah, really so like cool. Having... I hadn't thought of why that was before. That's really cool. It's like having two eyes in your head. This is a woodpecker. Woodpecker. This is and and my bad like paint over the <laughs> woodpecker. Um, woodpeckers have tongues that go back behind their skull, up and around, um, to prevent them from getting brain damage when they're to cushion their brain. Yeah. The cushion. That is metal. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> it is kind of gross that their tongue goes behind their brain, though. Not not just behind their brain, behind their skull. So I mean, how? Yeah. <laughs> just yeah. How? Right. Also, does it come out like? Because they also, they that they then like stick their tongues down in the yeah. holes that they've made into the tree to get little grubs yeah. and stuff, right? So does the tongue extend out really far so that it can do that? I think as so. Well? You see this little pointy bit on the end. It's like a little grabbing hook. It's like a forbidden fruit roll up. <laughs> this is a hummingbird, which actually has a very similar deal, only their tongue goes all the way around behind their eyeball. The spiral. All the way around. Goes up, round behind their skull, and then around again behind their eyeball. Their tongues uh, extend quite far out of their beaks, um, up to like eight times a second. Um, wow. To to get nectar out of, and it, they thought that that happened through capillary action for a long time, but it's way too capillary action will be way too slow. Actually, when it pushes into the liquid, it kind of opens up and like blossoms out, and then when it pulls back out of the liquid, the tip seals and pushes that liquid back. Kind of a valve type. Yeah. <laughs> Gecko. <laughs> I love it. Look at this bug. Yeah. <laughs> Again, it's an upwards outwards motion, only um instead of just moving up to move food around inside the mouth, they're moving up and out to catch buggies and pull them back in. They can get way further out than this. This one's quite a short range. Did I say gecko? I meant chameleon. Yeah, I was, I was like gecko. Short I mean, range chameleon. Lizard is a lizard, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, short range lizard. Look at this goofy anteater. Wow. It's got that tongue to get ants. Where does his tongue go? I think he just tucks it in the mouth. Does it in his mouth? Is it like this? It's like all folded up like that. Maybe the ant ear is the actual forbidden fruit roll up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, his tongue is actually the longest tongue to animal size of them all. Cats uh, yeah, uh, yeah. have... If you've ever had a cat, you will know they've got spiky little tongues like Velcro. Um, that they use for grooming and also probably tearing apart uh, muscle matter mm. on their prey. Made out of the same stuff as like hair and nails, mm. made out of keratin. Um, and finally... That's another little fish. Do you know what's going on here? Can I... you tell me what's happening in this image here? Is like, that Nemo? Like... Yeah. It's a clownfish. Yeah, it's Nemo. Inside this clownfish's mouth, a <gasps> little parasite has eaten its tongue, uh, dug into its mouth, and now the parasite serves in place of the tongue whilst it feeds on the blood and or food consumed by the clownfish. Okay, that's horrific. Yeah. That's possibly um, the worst thing you've ever told us. <laughs> Sure, I've said worse things on this show, <laughs> show on this channel. Yeah, it's it's a crustacean. It's like a relative of a lobster, you know, inside oh. the mouth, oh, eating on the tongue. That's really deeply um, unpleasant. That's really, really in, deeply unpleasant. <laughs> very common in commercially fished, like populations of commercial commercial fish. Um, in areas of overfishing, it can be like half of the fish. Oh have this in areas of less overfishing still like a third of them so much so much animal fat is like you grow up learning about the same animals 
on TV most of the time and you feel like you know everything and then you're just like, yeah. why did I never hear about this? What? Because yeah. <laughs> yeah. it's gross. It's because it's gross. <laughs> 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 Fucking idiot. <laughs> Do you agree that the tongue is an underrated organ or now you've seen this, are you wishing you'd never even considered Well, I certainly prefer it to a parasite, <laughs> so... Yeah, I'd rather my tongue than a fish. <laughs> or a lobster of some sort. Can you imagine mm-hmm. if Woody Woodpecker had the tongue of an actual woodpecker? Do you two know what do you two know, do you know yeah. who Woody yeah. Woodpecker yeah. is? 